Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast. And this is episode 94. Hoping you guys are all doing well. It's Friday night. Uh, yep, I'm outside. It's a beautiful night. Um, very calm. The air seems extremely clean and clear. The stars are actually out. The moon is bright. It's not a full moon, it's about three quarters. Um, real strange though, today, I was out here on the phone a little bit, a little while ago, and um, a lot of rabbits, like more than normal. I think I've seen like four or five rabbits. That's very rare. Um, like we see them, uh, but today was just weird. It could be just a coincidence, it's, you know. I'm not saying anything weird, but uh, or it could be that there's not that many people out there. So there, maybe the rabbits are coming out saying like, yo, what's up? <laughs> what's going on? Where's everybody at? But um, everything else is cool. We had to make a Walmart run. I hate doing Walmart runs. Angel goes in. She gears up. I stay in the car with Santana. Um, I really don't like her going out there, but... She thinks that she'll do a better job than I do as far as gearing up and following the directions and the rules. I'm a little impatient. She doesn't think I'll, I'll abide to the six feet uh, six feet rule or whatever they call it. So, um, <clears throat> but uh, she might be right. But uh, I'm just praying that, you know, this shit don't hit home. Um... <clears throat> I try my best not to watch the news that often. It's uh, scary, a little depressing. What I am noticing is that whenever I see um, something advertised or they, they do a post or on the news where they talk about X amount of people are recovering, I can't believe what a good feeling that is, you know? Um, it really is. And I think that's what we need to, what we need to see more of that. We need to see more of the positive statistics. I don't know if you guys can hear that train. <laughs> I talked about the train about maybe 20 episodes ago. Uh, train is very loud and it's not close to us. So hopefully, uh, you probably, probably can't hear it that much. But anyway, um, <clears throat> But yeah, you know, I think they need to publish more statistics as far as uh, the ratio of uh, people who are infected to to people who actually have to go to the hospital to the amount of people, or the amount of deaths that are actually occurring because of it. And though no death is okay, um, sometimes all we have right now is a little hope. You understand? So if we are, uh, you know, it's scary for everybody, you know. And um, uh, I just, when I see that, I feel good. Um, I feel positive. And I'm really, really sad about, you know, so many lives that are being lost right now. It's, it's so sad, so sad. Like, you know, I'm terrified for so many people. So many people. I just, I just, I wish I could just wake up and this is over, and this is, this has been a dream, you know, really a nightmare. <laughs> so, um, New York's really getting hit, man. I mean, that's my home. That will always be my home. Um, I don't think I have much family left there. I really don't. Definitely not in the cities. So everybody's gone. Everybody's in Florida. Or North Carolina. A lot of people now in North Carolina. There was a time that Florida was the new hub. Uh, now it's um, 
North Carolina. A lot of people moving out here from my family. So I thank God for that. You know, at least it gives us a little, a little bit more leverage than if we were in the city. You know, <clears throat> and a lot of us have homes and we're in more spacious areas like right now. I mean, there's nobody outside. It's just me. Santana's on the stoop uh, on her phone. She wants to come out and get some air. Um, but, you know, I mean, that I'm grateful for, you know. But then again, you know, uh, still those, you know, even people I don't know, or, you know, it's it's just crazy. It's crazy. It's hard for me to... Um, today I did a pretty cool TikTok. The Kevin Hart one. I don't know if you guys seen it. If not, check it out. Go on my Facebook page. I also post it on, uh, in my Instagram. Or just go to TikTok if you can. And uh, make sure you friend me. Uh, and um, those things are cool because they kind of kind of break up my day a little bit. You know, so in the mornings I try to produce a TikTok that takes me a little time. I try to do a little writing, and in the evening, I, I look forward to getting with you guys and doing the podcast, you know. And um, it's hard. It's hard to be creative, and it's hard to to do the things that I'm doing and uh, with, with all this shit on our mind. You know, remember, you know, it's not just me. I'm not even worried about myself. It's my kids and other family members, you know, and, you know, f- family of family of family friends you know it's just so it's it's hard to really be um to be creative and try to bring some sort of light try to be funny um but uh you know what else what else we're gonna do you know i'm not one to post negative stuff i talk to you guys because you know the podcast is more of a my my own daily personal blog basically you know so yeah in the podcast you will get some of the some of the uh, the more maybe a little bit more depressing information i try not to keep it there but i have to address it because it, it just won't seem real um if i'm talking to you guys and i don't address it i mean really and not only that the podcast sits for, for forever for as long as the platform exists um the podcast will remain and let it be documented that during this time uh, they're talking about this weekend being D-Day like what the hell does that mean you know it's like the death toll you know and it's very very scary you know um on another note just uh just trying to um Pass a little time. I'm not much of one to watch TV. I really, really force myself. Like, I have to, um, I have to binge watch. Uh, like, I'll give you an example. Like, <clears throat> like you guys know the Ozark. Uh, I think it's season three. Yeah, season three uh, is on, right? So now we saw seasons one and two last year, whenever, and we got into it. <clears throat> and it's cool because I like to watch an episode every night. Kind of throws me. Kind of takes my mind off of stuff, you know? And, um, but what I have a problem uh, doing is coming back and picking up from the next, for the, from the next, from the last season. That messes me up. I can't, I have a hard time doing that. Like, I don't want to do it. I have a problem getting into it. So, uh, those, those gaps, you know, like Angel wanted to watch the end of season two before we went on to season three because we totally forgot what it was about <laughs> we knew it was good that was it <laughs> but we forgot what it was about and we put it on and like throughout the whole episode the last episode of season two i'm asking questions i'm like like who's this what, why are they doing this you know what's hard you know i was lost man i was lost and so then we get into season three it's just hard for me to grasp it i know it's a good episode it's a great show I'm going to push through it, but um, I don't think I'm going to do that anymore. I think from now on, I got to wait till all the seasons are done and the show is basically over. Same thing happened to me when I first started. When I first started doing these uh, these uh, binges, I started with, I think, The Walking Dead. But it was still doing, they were still doing the shows. I think they still do the seasons. But once I had to break away from the season, I never came back. I came back and I could, for some reason, 
I couldn't pick up from where I left off. I was confused. I didn't know who was who. I lost the whole vibe of the story. So I couldn't do it. Same thing happened. We also did um, Scandal, which we got into. Couldn't go back to it. Um, what else we did? Angel, there was something else that we did. Angel was like, you, you needed to, uh, to, to watch the whole thing. You needed to finish that up, you know? Uh, but I can't. <laughs> <laughs> so after this one, I think I'm, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm going to wait till the show's over. Like now, I just watched. We watched The Americans. That was really cool. You get a chance to watch that. It's like six seasons. That was perfect. I prefer four seasons. I think six is kind of pushes it. Uh, but, you know, I enjoyed it. I was able to watch it all the way through. And I could, on a weekend morning, if we don't want to do anything, we'll sit on the couch and get some snacks. And we'll, we might knock out a few episodes, you know. And that's cool. That's, you know, we enjoy that. Um, I did that with Mad Men. I, I, I love, when I first saw the show, I started watching, I couldn't get into it. It was like too much sex. I was like, it's not that the problem was the sex. And it was like, come on, man. <laughs> it's about business. It's about the advertising world. And, you know, I'm fascinated by it, that, especially during that time in the 60s, you know. I'm, I'm fascinated by it, you know. Uh, but like every time I turn around, I turn on they, you know, they having sex. I'm like, oh come on, man, let's get let's get to it, man. Let's, you know. And then of course, I now came back maybe a few months later because everybody started talking about. I said, man, let me just let me just sit tight for a minute. And after a while, I got through it. All the sex was gone. They were just trying to establish all the relationships that were going on. And uh, and I, I ended up that ended up becoming like one of my favorite shows. You know, cause I just, I love that whole business thing. And I, I just love advertising. I love marketing. I just, I'm so fascinated by that stuff, you know. Um, I got books on, um, if you guys ever want to learn, learn about the TV commercials from back in the days. Uh, like, um, Squeeze the Shaman, Please Don't Squeeze the Shaman. Uh, the, the, the the tissue, the tissue, pa- the toilet paper, and you know all these different ads, the Coca-Cola ads and the Pepsi ads, and try to learn the history about how these things came about, and it's just fascinating, man. It's fascinating um, how how this how these things develop, and then now you see it with social media. See, this is this is what's interesting, you know. Like <clears throat> back in the days, it was print. It went from print print ads to radio ads then it went from radio ads to tv ads okay and i'm talking when i say print i also mean like posters and billboards and you know things inside uh, transportation and so on um magazines newspapers and so on mostly newspapers newspaper ads were uh, uh were very were a big deal and um uh, uh and then it went from there it went to um to TV. Now, this was what was crazy, right? TV, when they started doing the ads for TV, what they were doing is there was basically radio ads being produced for TV. So what they would do is they'll be in the middle of announcement, you know, be like an MC for a game show or whatever. And he would stay there and he would hold up the product or they'll get dancing girls that would be dressed like the product and he'll just do the commercial. And what they were doing is they were basically using TV the same exact way they would do radio. It was real, really only audio. The, the visual really wasn't that big of a deal, you know? Um, it was later on that they decided to use TV a little differently by turning it more into telling a story with the product, you know? Showing how the product actually works. You know, that's a pretty new concept. It's not an old concept, you know. Uh, It's pretty new. Um, But now you have social media. So social media now is taking the place of uh, radio, uh, television. You know, you look at... um, You look at, you know, Twitter. You know, Twitter is taking the place of the news, you look at um, LinkedIn. That's taking the the place of like the New York Times. 
you know, you look at um, uh, Facebook. You know, Facebook is, you know, what is 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 operating like pretty much like a magazine. Think about it. You know, it's entertainment, entertainment, people entertaining you, entertaining you, just like a magazine, and boom, an ad. Boom, an ad. Or one of those ads that are disguised as an article until you look up on the top of the magazine. It says real small advertisement or advertisement, however you say it. Um, So that's working more like, and then you have things like YouTube. (coughs) YouTube or um, Instagram. You know, look at look at how these things are being used. It's it's crazy, you know. So I'm extremely, extremely fascinated by all of that. You know, I think we live in an incredible time. And any of you guys who have businesses or you're trying to build stuff, you know, don't push social media to the side. You know, when I deal with my promoters, you know, they always tell me, yeah, man, I'm putting 20 grand into radio. And I'm always like, ah. Oh, man. They're like, what? What? I'm like, man, forget radio, man. Forget radio. Put that 20 grand into social media, man. You don't even need 20 grand. You know, radio gives you nothing for 20 grand. Nothing. A small, really, really simple one week campaign is about 3,500 bucks. And that's for a real cheap campaign. That's a cheap campaign. That's like, um, Times that people even don't even listen, you know, times that people don't even listen to a damn radio, you know, uh, and then you can't really, they, you know, they'll tell you how many spots they're giving you a radio for that, but you don't know who's listening. There's really no way they can, they can estimate, oh yeah, X amount of people um, listen to the radio from three to five. Okay, but how many of those people from three to five are actually interested in what you're giving them? See what I'm saying? No, man. Same thing with billboards. So a billboard charge you 60 grand to put up an ad for whatever. The, the length of time. Yeah, but t- 2 million cars pass by every day. Well, it's not that many, but I'm just exaggerating. Okay, cool. But your ad is about, you're advertising, I don't know, what do they advertise? Coffee. How many of those people are coffee drinkers? There's no telling. There's no way of telling. There's no way of measuring this stuff. Social media, however, yes, there is. It's called the algorithm. And a lot of you guys probably heard that word before. And basically what the algorithm is, it's a computer. It's a program that they design that actually teaches itself about you. So if you're on, and I'll give you an example, okay? And they do this, it's called Pixels. That's a whole other story. But uh, how many times have you guys gone on Amazon, looked at a really cool pair of boots, okay? And then later on, you got back on Facebook and you can see the ad for the boots. You go on Instagram, you see the ad for the boots, (laughs) You, you go one of these other social medias and you see the ad for the boots. Well, that's what the algorithm, that's what the pixels do. You know, um, the algorithm, what it does, it recognizes and it memorizes the things you like and the things you don't like. It can tell if you're passing up. So let's say you don't like politics and there's a post on politics and you keep posts and you pass that post every time there's a post you just scroll you leave it they won't show you though you'll see very few of those posts but let's say there's a post about the beach and every time you see a beach you stop and you stay at that picture for a few minutes or a few seconds you know longer than normal uh the algorithm will actually remember this and when it comes time for somebody to advertise and let's say a travel agent is advertising uh, a beach pro- uh, beachfront uh, properties, you're going to see the ad because the algorithm remembers that you like that. 
So that's how that works. So it's, it's really, really, and if you're on the other side as an advertiser, you have the ability to pinpoint your audience. How many of you guys have been on Facebook and saw t-shirts being promoted with your name on it, your last name? Hmm. Well, do you know, I don't see that (laughs) t-shirt. I don't see the t-shirts with your name on it. I only see the ones with my name on it. That's what it does. They, They have the ability to do that. They have the ability, social media has the ability to advertise, to advertise things that they know you're going to like for sure. So unlike that billboard where two, mil, two million cars pass and maybe 200 people like that kind of coffee, that's a lot of wasted space, okay? And they do that for $60,000 a month. Trust me. You put $60,000 into a social media ad, okay, your market, your target audience is being targeted, and it's going to be precise, and your percentage of people that it's going to go to is going to be 100%. Those people who like it are going to see it. Those people whose last name is uh, is Mercado are going to see those t-shirts, but people whose last name is Rodriguez or Rivera I'm not going to see that ad. They won't see the Mikado ad. So it's really, really interesting how it works. And it just shows um, the potential that we have this, you know, these days, you know, running businesses. Uh, And that's why a lot of people can run businesses right from their home and actually right from social media. So, But anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Something to think about. Um, of course, if any of you guys ever have any questions in regards to that, please feel free to reach out to me, send me a, a message or whatever. And um, um, that's pretty much it, you know. So anyway, listen, so listen, guys, you know, stay safe. Try to stay home. Um, praying for everyone for this entire planet. I'm hoping that something incredibly good comes from this. It has to, because too many people have sacrificed their lives. So, anyway, thanks again. God bless, and good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.